Because not everyone thinks he did a, a good job. But what we can say is that it looks for him in Uxbridge also something uh, that where there may be some concern. He had a 12,000 majority 12, here. 12,000! It's, it's now down to 5,000. 5, some people think it won't happen again. Welcome to another edition of Zoom 101. I'm your host, Dave Hughes. Is there anything in the world of entertainment you cannot stand, you want to see banished? That's the question to be asking my guest tonight. The guest being author, writer, poet, fish juggler, and raconteur, Colin Davis. Hi, Colin, how are you? I'm doing great, Dave, how are you? I'm great, thank you for joining me on Zoom 101. Uh, I don't know if you've watched any, but um, we're not ripping off a famous TV program no um, not no, at no, all i mean no, no, no. you're not not nor george orwell none of it you're not ripping no. off any of it no no no, and it's no. Not in public domain. Uh, so if, i'm glad you've come to play along <laughs> i have I'm sorry, i've come I... to play along probably very controversial my selections all right well let's have a look at pick number one pick number one and i'm expecting death threats for this one Harry Potter. Go on. <laughs> right. Hang on. I liked Harry Potter. Yeah. I yeah. liked Harry Potter. <laughs> I, 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 already, <laughs> you can hear it. I can, if you listen carefully, you can already hear somebody burning an effigy of you, didn't you? It's the whole franchise around Harry Potter that I want to put in Room 101. Yeah. <clears throat> I. I, lo I like Harry Potter. I don't like the books as much as some people do. I actually think Ron Weasley in the books is utterly horrid. And I really can't understand how anyone is friends with him. Um, and I like the films of Harry Potter, but I started falling out of love with Harry Potter when I saw a queue as long as the street in the shambles in York just to queue up to get in to a Harry Potter shop. And then there was one time in band camp when we were walking past it and there was no queue. So I went in to have a look and there were copies of all seven Harry Potter books in different covers for each of the houses. And at that point, I'm like, if, you, if someone is a completist, like I'm a collector, you're a collector. If someone's a Harry Potter completist, that means they have to have four complete hardback sets on top of all the other versions that have come out. It's the same book, but they just keep bringing it out and out and out and out with different covers and out and out and out and out and out. And it's been a long time now since we've had that. And then you've got the Fantastic Beasts. Love the first one. Second one I thought was rubbish, though I am looking forward to the third one. But they're still just films. And it's just, it's the way it's turned into this utter soulless money machine so i'm kind of like put it in zoom 101 stop that money going over and then maybe maybe just re-release it everyone forget about it and then re-release it you know because that's why agatha christie books are better than harry potter books and you don't have this amount of money grabbing vultures attached to it i think you make quite a good valid point uh because i uh... I'm not a fan of these um, spin-off the movies, the, the, what is it, the Fantastic... Yeah, the Fantastic Beasts. I know they were making them. I can understand some logic in it. Make it a trilogy, fair enough. Well, not five films. Why do you want to stretch yeah. it out? I mean, that, that enough. Then they got the stage play. Apparently, it's very good, but it's in two parts. So you have to go to the theatre twice in London to see parts one and two. Ah, oh, that's a bit of a rip-off. And yeah. um, like you said... These books they keep churning out. I mean, I saw there's one bit, like the adult version of Harry Potter, adult version. No, it's not yeah. the cover, make it look like a thriller. Like you said, it's the same words. What's the point of that? What's the point of that? Just so that it's just so that 
my friends can come round whilst we're having. Yeah. I don't know what people have at dinner parties nowadays. In my day, it used to be fondue, you know. But you know, people come around for dinner and they won't look at your shelf and go, "Oh, you got kids' books on your shelf." <laughs> it's rubbish. It really is. It's just a money-making machine. Well, you can't argue with this Harry Potter ripoff because it's free on YouTube. Guys, Professor Dumbledore posted a list of words that are banned from Hogwarts. Ron, Snape. Ron, Severus Ron, Snape. 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 Severus Snape. 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 Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Severus Harry Potter. Snape. Harry Potter. You floppy wanted dementor buggerer. What? Dobby's sock. Uh, that you can, I mean, there's a certain amount of it you can forgive because, of, you know, it was a phenomenal success and all that kind of stuff. But I think I think nowadays success just brings this whole new level of um, of tyranny <laughs> with it. And it's almost like it's the classic case, isn't it? If you if you really, really look at what Harry Potter now represents, yeah, it's almost like Voldemort won. <laughs> yeah. That's just a way of putting it. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I remember having a good time watching Harry Potter the cinema. I mean, the first one, I still think it was, to me, he's still one of the better ones in the, because it was a nicer one. And if I'm not, you got anything I like Christmas, the first time I saw it. Yes, always. Yeah. Uh, well, the last I, I, one, um, even though he's very downbeat, the amount of people crying in that screen, a lot of sniffling going on. So it was very emotional. And I thought, we're not going to get this again. Yeah. But the. The, the the thing is, is that, yes, they're, they're lovely. They're of their time. They are this thing that happened, you know, like 20 odd years ago. And and it was a thing. And it's a little bit like the Star Wars thing is I love Star Wars. Most of it, there are there are there is more bad Star Wars than there is good Star Wars because of what it has become. And, and that kind of I know that's the template for everything. Um, and like I say, when they brought it back, loved Force Awakens, I think The Last Jedi needs to be completely erased <laughs> from our existence. Um, because it, they just didn't get it. They, they kept trying to put too much on top of it because you can, I think the Jurassic Park films prove that you can do that because it's just dinosaurs. It's just, what do people want? Dinosaurs running around. Great, just give them dinosaurs running around. It doesn't have to get too serious. And I think with the Fantastic Beasts, they've taken a little bit of, they've, they've become to believe their own hype of what Harry Potter really is. And it's trying to make it too serious, you know, and it's, I mean, I love the, my favorite one's the third one, the prisoner of Azkaban with the whole time travel stuff. And it was just, it's a lovely self-contained story. And I like the whole story arc on it. And if they stopped after the last one and didn't continue milking it and just brought out toys every so often, did it that way, then I would be absolutely all in favour and go, look, Harry Potter is this great, phenomenal thing. I mean, I absolutely agree with what you're saying, to be honest. I mean, the milk, I mean, even the last film is technically two films, if you think about it. So, yeah. And I kind of feel like I do have a soft spot for Harry Potter. This is why I'm a bit torn because there used to be a girl I used to come to the cinema on first book, she's known as Lucy Lockett. Now, she was telling me a story that, um, she had to have surgery and she was, when she was pretty young and she had learning difficulties. And going in for like a, an operation is scary. Yes. The only things that she had as a bravery thing before she had the operation is we gave her a book of Harry Potter. Then she saw the first film. And she saw it again and again and again. She saw the first film, The Floss the Storm, at the cinema I worked at 77 times and kept every ticket and every film after that, it, she upped it. Came to a certain age, I think it was round Goblet of Fire. I think she it pulled in the reins and she kind of said, I'm all right now. So yeah. I thought about it four times at that rate. I think she found a sort of new thing. But for that time, though, like you said, with Voldemort winning, she was paying, but she was paying on her own, which she wants to see it again and again because it, it meant something. For her. That's fair I, enough. That's a lovely know. story. But more importantly is this. Having your book advertised for free on the national TV show being seen by 80 million people. My favourite things, magic and reading, using my three favourite books. My first favourite author is Colin Davis, Math and Magical.
the room to die. <laughs> what was that? What was she? What was she having an operation? Oh, she had to have popcorn removed from her. Yeah. But yeah. yeah I mean, no, that's a lovely story. I can't. Yeah, yeah. I, can, I can't. And I can't put it in, but I'll try and meet you halfway for oversaturation of Harry Potter, as in the books, the original books. I won't put in, but yes. the re- repurpose book for adults, for kids. For like for houses will go in, so I will put in repurpose books for Harry Potter in Zoom One Hundred One. I'm I, I'm in, I, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. That's perfect. It's all right then. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all right with that. We're all happy then. Oh, hell. <laughs> <laughs> all right, they put the fire right now in India. Woo! Whoever makes Harry Potter books goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to get a publishing contract with them, am I? Yeah, no, uh, getting death threats. I've already had this. It was in a different <laughs> colour. <laughs> I'll have a death threat for each of the houses, yeah. won't I? Yeah. Pick, Pick two. number two is... The Hobbit movies. Oh, <laughs> I'll just polish the old handle there. To pull the <laughs> right. <laughs> you might be a lot with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I love The Hobbit as a book. Right. I love the Lord of the Rings films. I don't like the Lord of the Rings book. Yeah. Right. I think it's it's not particularly great, but I love the the, the Hobbit and. I, I, when I saw the extended versions of Lord of the Rings, I'm dead excited. All over Middle Earth in the movies, I thought it was absolutely brilliant. The Hobbit comes out, and at first, the idea of making it as two movies I could get, calling the first one there and the second one and back again, that would be great because that's that would be then meta and completely intertextual to what actually happens in Lord of the Rings. But then they made it three movies. And then they put loads of stuff in it that is just from all over the place of Middle Earth. And they took this wonderful, self-contained, nice little journey story and turned it into an overblown, terrible special effects. And I'm one, I can forgive bad special effects. I'm very, very good for it. But not in that. I mean, the, the, the first one I kind of got through and was trying to figure out what Doctor Who was doing in it and all that kind of stuff. And then it, then it moved into the second one. And the last of the dragon's nice in the last one, but the Battle of the Five Armies was just so over the top and ridiculous. And it spoiled the whole thing for me. And I can't watch the Hobbit movies. I know apparently there's a cut of it that fans have done online where they've taken out every scene that does not contain Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> and, <laughs> and apparently that's a really good two hour movie, right? And that's in all three films. All three films cut down to a two-hour movie with only the Bilbo Baggins bits in it, and that's the story of The Hobbit. He's He is the protagonist. So why we are following Gandalf going looking for the necromancer, I've no idea, because in the book it should have just been a, I'm going off to look for the necromancer. You get on with it, you lot. Right? And then he goes away and you're left thinking, oh, I wonder what that is. You don't have to show everything. And I think basically there he just, he, it was like a, kid in a candy store with a, with his mum's credit card and no limit and it's you know and and yeah it it was n- not good <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised wouldn't you because it took new line a while to get peter jackson back and then we're gonna get somebody else we're making these two films and then then they were, well he's not peter jackson. Yeah. he came up oh go on i'll do it and everybody's oh great yeah because we like your vision so and like you said it was set in stone um there and back, like you said, poetic. And he came out the day to send this Christmas, that Christmas, and that Christmas. Hang on, that's three. Yeah. What? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're making a trilogy. Yeah. Sorry, hang on, what? <laughs> I actually came upstairs and onto my bookshelf and got the book just to measure it and go, hang on a second. You know, because it was like, there's no way there's three films in that book. Yeah. You know. <laughs> And I thought you don't make short films, Peter. <laughs> I, no, I know. I remember his King Kong. <laughs> I've got the long version in like an idiot. They go, oh, I'll be good. <laughs> in the see in the Hobbit, it works because that is just a pure journey. Yeah. 
Yeah. And actually, the first of the three books, the, the Fellowship of the Ring, is the best of the three books because it, it only does the journey. It just goes, I mean, you're still sitting there going, why don't the eagles just take on the Mordor? I just don't understand that, yeah. right? It's just, oh, can you just drop us off at Mount Doom? Yeah, sure, there we go. All right. Um, and and it does, and it's a lovely self-contained thing, and you have the bowl rock, and it's a beautiful scene. And in the movie as well, the movie was a bit like that. Is you, the first one, the first of the ring, kind of blows you away, it takes your breath away. You are introduced to Middle Earth. That's what it is. Um, and then it starts getting really convoluted at that point. It does it a bit at the beginning, but as you, as they start to meet more characters, and and Tolkien has insists on giving you the lineage of every single character that you meet. And then when you do actually get into a battle, you're about I think you're about a hundred pages into the battle before you realise that they're actually having a battle because it's just lists of lineage, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's just like oh him, son of him, son of him, son of him, son of him strikes. I would have loved to have seen Del Toro because Del Toro was originally yeah. signed to it, and he was doing the two movies. And I love Del Toro's work. Yeah, that I think... beat me interest. I thought, oh, this yeah, is absolutely amazing. Oh, but Jackson's back. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think the continuity was to, uh, trying to make things look the same, and all. didn't need it. I think you needed that set, that fresh fresh eyes sometimes. I think Jackson was too entrenched. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was nice to sort of have a pop up from Christopher Lee and Kate Blanchett, but that rate, I mean, I mean, did you see the Hobbits at the cinema? Yes. See, I I watched I only watched the first one at the cinema. The other two, I just watched at home. Um, because I thought that first one was a toil, and, that, and that's the normal cut, the theatrical cut. God yeah. knows what the extended ones are, because I was watching it going, this is an hour and a half, I believe, fighting in the kitchen here. Yeah. When all the things were breaking, and all the you know, oh, go around, and they sit around the table for an hour, like, oh, my God, you haven't got anywhere well, yet. <laughs> not only that, is he did that stupid thing of using the high-definition cameras, didn't he? So... Yeah, you, but only for certain bits of it. <laughs> yeah, but it didn't. It was like this bit of it when there's loads of effects going on. They they didn't use the the high spec cameras. I can't remember what it was. It was a, a very high specification, like eight K or something like that cameras. Yeah. Then they used it for only certain scenes, and the scenes that they used it on looked like neighbors. I was about to say when I watched it, I went with my friend Becky from Bundy Jukebox. Went. Is this like Coronation Street? Is this being filmed live? <laughs> these monsters, these monster mountains fighting. Is this live? Because it's got like Coronation Street live TV effect. Yeah. Is it my brain? What's going on? <laughs> it was the, the whole the way the focusing worked and everything. It was just like it was like it was you could see the studio and it was yeah. yeah. That were really off putting that. I mean, I can understand going forward in technology to make it more realistic, but look real. But it made it really like it actually felt like I was watching a theatre play, and I was expecting to see stage jams at the time. Of the yes. Um, yes. So it, that was that didn't work. So the bad style choices, bad story choices, uh, terrible special effects choices. There were, I think, there were voice actors used just for the sake of getting a name on there, and I'm referring to um, Humphreys, who plays the King of the Trolls. You know, it was I, I was half expecting to go into blooming um Dame Edna Everidge at some point. Yeah. I was doing that. <laughs> it just sounded like it. Um I did like it when Stephen Fry popped up with a painting of him. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, I mean, you know, I said for Harry Potter, there was a girl who I think, you know what, I, I can't put Harry Potter in because what it, that means to her. I know a girl who absolutely loves dragons and Benedict Cumberbatch. But he's in everything. <laughs> I'm not going to let go. He's, he's a great silky voice, but he's in everything. It's fucking going in. <laughs> Bloody hell, <Albie. laughs> Don't go on a quest with. So when you have a connection with someone, that means something. Okay, let's have a look at the final pick. This, uh, I'm, I'm all hitting for the controversy. I've got my controversy bat out, and I'm going, I'm trying knocking out the park. Right shields. <laughs> I'd like to put into Zoom 101, Dan Brown books. It's no coincidence that the worst published writer in the world today is also one of the world's most successful writers, Dan Brown. Now, 
Dan Brown writes sentences like, the famous man looked at the red cup. <laughs> now, Dan Brown writes the best cliffhangers you've ever read. Unfortunately, the rest of his story <laughs> is a bit rubbish. And I have evidence for this, for something we'll talk about. But see, as a patient, as you, you want to sit there and you want to read uh, something where you get to the end of a chapter and it makes you want to read the next chapter. He writes those hooks brilliantly. That's his talent. You know, again, going back to Harry Potter, it's like the guy that was very good at memory spells. You know, he could write everything because he could wipe people's memories. He's very good at writing those last chapters. The rest of the stuff isn't great. My evidence is a conversation I had not that long ago with somebody. Uh, it was with Sean Wilson. You know, the guy that used to play Martin Platt in Coronation Street. Oh, yeah. So I'm talk we're, we're having a chat about other things we do because I have a podcast where we talk about old stories and he comes on regularly as a guest. And he was saying how when he watched the Dan Brown movie, it was exactly what he expected to see from reading the book. And I said, yeah, but the books are that thick. Yeah, they are and you're watching it not going, this is missing and that's missing and that's missing. You're reading a book that thick and they're giving you a two hour movie and it's satisfying your story. That shows you how much of that book you're not taking in and reading. Yeah. And even then, I actually think the films are rubbish. Um, <laughs> I, just, I mean, Da Vinci Code, phenomenal success. Though, you know, you could argue that it, it exploded the concept of conspiracy theories, you know, because it made it a lot more mainstream and made people suddenly go looking for these kind of strange theories and stuff like that. But when you got, you know, you got Tom Hanks with all earnest shouting, we need to find a library. That's hardly an action movie. <laughs> That's a great line, though. <laughs> we need to find a library, you know. Um, and then you got the bit, there's a bit on the double-decker bus where he just takes a phone off somebody and starts using their mobile data and he doesn't get stabbed in London. You know, these are these are fundamental things for me that take me out of the experience. You know, when you sort of sit there and we're, hang on a second, I'm sat in a cinema. <laughs> you know, it's like that. <laughs> And I'm not a movie snob. I went to see Uncharted recently and bloody loved it. Yeah, I absolutely adored it. And it even got an you know, a round of applause at the end of it. It's complete nonsense, but it was just so much fun, right? Yeah. And then I'm watching this thing and it's kind of like, what on earth are they doing? Why are they doing that? And then there's Angels and Demons. I watched that not that long ago. And I actually, I put a little thing on Facebook saying, I, I'm just watching a film that begins with Ewan McGregor smashing the Pope's ring. And you'd expect that to be a much better film. <laughs> Wrong. Brown. <laughs> yeah, that round. So, you know, so the films are a bit tedious, and the books are very tedious, and they're, and they're full of, you know, a lot of kind of like he, he repeats himself over and over and over again. But my, he can write cliffhangers. He's very very good at writing cliffhangers. But for the majority of it. I know there's a lot of people who are fans, but they're not sat in this seat right now. If they wanted to sit in this seat and argue it, then that's fine. But I am not a fan of Dan Brown. It's not for me. And I actually think it creates a false mode of what people think literature should be. So that's why I want to put Dan Brown in Zoom 101. Um, but, you know, for, for, for my own personal bigotry. Right. I, I think you, you put up a good defence there because... I, do you know like these cowboy films? You know when like a cowboy walks into the saloon and everybody's playing the music, ding 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 ding, and I'm just going to stop just for a minute while yes. like, a cowboy walks in. Like I felt like that once when I picked up the Da Vinci Code. I was in like Waterstone. I picked up. Everybody seemed to stop talking and look at me like <laughs> put it back and walk away from it. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not a price. I'm... And I looked because I thought I like things with puzzle making, I like adventures, I like things like National Treasure, I love Indiana Jones. So this was National like Treasure, uh, complete nonsense, and it's brilliant. Yeah. So I thought this yeah. might be obviously a more intellectual version. And uh, and when I finally got to pick up the book and look at the back and halfway through, I thought, I'm bored now. And I was like, something <laughs> the back. And I know he's like Dan Brown, his name is he was kind of a bit muddy in, in the world, the criticism world. Uh 
But I mean, I remember when I went to the cinema, I was trying my best to sort of plug the film. We had a midnight screen. It was full well. I thought for a film like this, amazing. Mm. And then I saw part of it and I went, uh. and I, <laughs> to this day, I saw the ending and I saw yeah. the beginning bit. I didn't see the middle bit and I hadn't seen the second film, the third film, or the Amazon TV series. And the oh, thing, I didn't even know there were further yeah, ones. I kind of. I'm going to do a fourth one with Tom Hanks, but. Uh, I don't think he got his hair as big as he could in the first film. <laughs> Which for me ruined me watching Tom Hanks films. I used to love watching Tom Hanks in films until that mullet came out, and then from then it's just downhill. But <laughs> whether you, you score his performance on his age now, I don't know. But soon that mullet came out, I'm like, Tom, I'm done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, just, I'm done let me <laughs> let me put some more examples. Like I say, books this thick that people go, oh no, the film is exactly like the book. That thick book, right? Yeah. The um, one of the things in the second one in Demons and Angels when I'm watching Demons and Angels now I I watch films with people hanging out the back of you know I, I like James Bond and I even like the last James Bond movie and and you know I there's a lot of stuff I like that other people disagree with with me on that one and I, you know I can put up with the most preposterous stuff but when Tom Hanks rips a page out of a 600 year old book in order to be able to follow its clues and take it out of it. You know, these are humatically sealed books in the Vatican vaults. You know, I, was the, I think it's the, it's the lady that he's with. Just peels it out like Marty McFly taking a page out of the phone book, right? And you're like, he's just looking at it going, you wouldn't make it out alive. <laughs> One man must help her solve the riddle. Nice hair. Thanks. That's right. So she can guard against data loss and protect her information. Wait, try it backwards. S B S. No. S B S means small business server and small business specialists. Look, there's another massage. Look, it's in Latin. Yup, tu. Date. Up to date. Of course, I'm going to put Dan Brown in, but I will take a leaf from what he did. We'll put taking the page out of the book. Oh. The line, yeah. we must find the library is gold. <laughs> that can't go in. <laughs> so I'll put that to one side. <laughs> Let's go to but you got to, you got to make sure you, go before you rip that out, before you rip that out, make sure you're in the vaults of the Vatican <laughs> and then rip that page out. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody drop the books and candles. Sorry. <laughs> of course, it's going and bye bye. All right. Yes. <laughs> well, do you know what? You've done pretty well there. I mean, Harry Potter we went halfway. Dan Brown, a souvenir's gone in. Do you know what? I'm going to let you have one more in. Uh, he's, he, he, I won't contest this one. You can put anything you want in. Pierce Morgan. Pierce Morgan. Fair enough. <laughs> in he goes. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, contested. Thank you so much, Colin. Have we got uh, any other books coming out soon? Oh well, I'm in the middle of doing a degree at the minute, so things kind of slow down a little bit. But I'm halfway through. I've got my exit in here, blood ink. I'm halfway through the second book of those, Ooh. and I'm a third of the way through the third book of Mathematical. Oh, as well. And I've got a stage play coming, which is going to be doing a performance next year. And I'm also hoping to bring out next year as a comedy book, uh, uh, which I'm writing, which is a very Tom Sharp style comedy book called Don Quixote. <laughs> it's a little seaside town called Puddle on Sea. And there's a murder. Puddle on Sea. Nothing to do Puddle... with Blackburn all that. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, but this murder happens that it happens at the same time. There's a there's a there's a B and B hotel thing in Puddle on Sea that always does theme weeks, and this murder happens to happen at the same time as they're doing Agatha Christie week. So the town is full of people dressed up as Urkel Poirot and <laughs> and, all that. and so the basically there's this murder and they're trying to investigate this murder, but the only witness that can actually identify them is a donkey called Oti. That's why it's called Donkey Oti. Uh, brilliant. I had an idea once, uh, I think more of a, from a dream, 
I'm doing a script. It was, again, it was a murder, but it was a comic con, and all the characters were all dressed up as different characters. Do you never see the real people? <laughs> like Spider Man and Cinderella trying to work out his crime. <laughs> Why Cinderella? <laughs> Especially if you had, you had Spider Man smoking a big pipe as well. That would be quite a good one. <laughs> Why are you smoking a pipe? Well, I'm not really Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming on tonight. Oh, sorry, sorry. Thank you for having me, Dave. Thank you for having me. It's been it's been an absolute pleasure. No problem. And thank you guys for watching. Good <laughs> the I can't speak. <laughs> that can go in room one on one. So thank you for watching. Until next time. Good night. Good night.